Hi, Dr. Christofferson here again. Today we're going to tell you what we actually hear when we listen to your pet with a stethoscope. To start with, I want to say that a stethoscope is a really old school instrument. It hasn't changed a whole lot in a hundred years, but it's still really useful. So to start with, I'm going to go through the anatomy of the stethoscope, and then I'm going to actually tell you what we hear when we listen to your pet. So to get acquainted with the stethoscope, let's go over the various parts here. To start with, this is the bottom part that we listen to your pet with. This here is the diaphragm. That is the part that wiggles. And in here, we have the drum. That is the part where the sound is amplified. The sound moves down the tube into the binaural. That's the metal pieces that have the nice bend here that pokes into our ears. And then out the ear pieces here. So the sound enters here by wiggling the diaphragm. And this whole contraption is just a hollow tube all the way to the end. The sound waves travel all the way down and then come right out of the earpieces there. Just a hollow tube. Like I said, really old school tech. So let's see how all these parts work together. I've got a mock-up of a stethoscope on the whiteboard here and it corresponds pretty closely to my stethoscope here. If you can see it, flip that back on and let's look how it works. So I've got my handy dandy marker here and we're going to start off by talking about the diaphragm and drum. So your pet is here pet, and this is what we place the stethoscope against. Now the wiggles in the chest of your pet made by the heart and lungs come to the surface and they wiggle the diaphragm here and those wiggles get transferred up into the drum and they get amplified by the size of the drum. And then they just follow the hollow tubes through here up into the metal binaural which allows the tubes to bend so they can go into our ears just like you see here. Up, up, up and then out through the earpieces and into our ears where we hear the sound, whatever it may be, heartbeat, lung sounds, and whatnot. So now that we know how a stethoscope works, what are we actually listening to when we listen to your pet? First, we'll start with heart. With your pet's heart, we are listening to the rate, the rhythm, and the quality of the sound. So the rate is really simple. That's the speed or the heart rate. Thump, 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 thump. That is the speed of the heartbeat. For an example, in something like dogs, it's about 100 beats a minute. Cats, about 120 beats a minute. Humans, you're looking at about 70 beats a minute. Hummingbirds, 1,000 beats a minute. So it can vary quite a bit based on species, but it also varies a lot depending on the excitement level of your pet. When they're sleeping, it may be quite a bit lower. When they're excited, it'll be higher. At the vet, it's higher. If you yell squirrel, it gets quite a bit higher. Other than that, we look at rhythm. We don't look, we hear. We hear the rhythm. So the rhythm is how even are the beats spaced. For example, if we hear thump, 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 it's a nice even rhythm. If we hear thump, 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 thump that's an abnormal rhythm and something we probably want to look into. The final thing we listen for is the quality of that beat. So with the heartbeat, there are two sounds and we want to hear a nice crisp lub dub. That is one beat. That's the heart valves opening and closing that make lub dub. And those heart valves prevent the backflow of blood in the heart. So the blood is always moving one way, which is exactly what we want. If blood black backflows in the heart, then we have a problem. The heart valves aren't sealing properly and this can be a sign of heart disease. It's something we can often also hear with the stethoscope. It sounds kind of like lub sh dub and that sh sound is a little bit of blood flowing backwards in the heart. If we hear that, it tells us to look a little further and see if there's something wrong with your pet. Not all heart murmurs are problematic, but a lot of them are. Typically we'll recommend uh, cardiac ultrasound, x-rays, or something along those lines to look a little further. So those are the things, especially, that we're listening for when we listen to your pet's heart.
The next important thing we're listening for is lung sounds. When we listen to lungs, we're listening for two things. We're listening to hear that they're unrestricted and that they're clear. So what do we mean by that? Restricted simply means the airways have narrowed. They've gone from being nice and wide open to pretty tightly closed down. This often happens with inflammation and it can happen with a few other diseases as well. Inflammation, a great example is asthma. The airways get inflamed, they get constricted, and your pet can't breathe properly. And we often hear kind of wheezing a <laughs> sound. And if we hear that, we know to look a little deeper to see what's going on. The other thing that we listen for is to make sure the lung sounds are clear. And by clear, we mean we don't want to hear other sounds in the lungs. We don't want to hear fluid in the lungs, and that can be heard as crackles or gurgling. And we want to be sure we can actually hear lung sounds. If we can't hear lung sounds at all, that can indicate either that the lungs have gone solid, either they're full of something like bacteria or full of some other disease, and that's called a consolidation, and that's not great because now no oxygen is getting through the lung in that area. The other thing that can happen is we can have something between the lungs and the stethoscope, a mass or something like that on the outside of the lungs will also stop the lung sounds from coming through. Again, both good reasons to have a look and see what's going on. Now, the exception to that are cats. As every cat owner knows, cats are special. They're always an exception. Sometimes with cats, we simply don't hear lung sounds, and that's considered normal. Go figure. Occasionally, we'll use a stethoscope to listen for other sounds as well. Sometimes we'll listen to the abdomen, especially to listen to the guts to see if they're all right, the intestines and such, and every now and then we hear really weird things through the stethoscope. Sometimes we hear intestines in the chest. That's weird, and it's a really good reason to go looking for the cause. The other thing that we can hear a lot is the rest of the world. So if we're in a noisy environment, it makes it really hard for us to hear your pet. Of course, the flip side to that is sometimes we go ahead and we poke the earpieces in our ears and we're listening to your pet and a client starts talking to us and we don't realize because we can't hear them because the earpieces actually seal out sound pretty well but loud noises get in and interfere so just so you know if we're listening to your pet with a stethoscope and you say something to us and we're very rude and ignoring you we're probably just not able to hear you so Wait until the stethoscope's out of our ears, and if we're still ignoring you, then, well, maybe that's telling you something. I don't know. The other thing we often hear is purring, really, in cats. Obviously, if your dog is purring, well, uh, come see me. And that is great. I love the sound of a cat purring. But purring through a stethoscope is so loud, it blocks out all other sounds. So we've developed a whole range of tricks over the years to stop cats from purring, such as running water in the exam room, uh, dabbing a little bit of alcohol on a cotton ball and holding it up their nose, trying to reason with them, all these kind of things. Generally we're successful, sometimes we're not. Again, cats, go figure, right? So finally, I've got some recordings for you. I I'm a little proud of myself. I'm a guyver to stethoscope, so you could listen to this. And what I've got for you is a nice, normal sounding heartbeat from one of my cats. Hear the nice rate and rhythm. You'll notice also it's not a completely clear sound like you might have heard on TV or something like that. The stethoscope. Like I said, it's old school. We can only hear so much through it, and that is uh, pretty typical of what we actually hear through the stethoscope. So I also wanted to record a normal dog heart rate, so of course, I chose my dog for this. And lo and behold, do you hear that? Do you hear the little shh there? It's not quite clear. So in making this video, I actually diagnosed a new heart murmur in my dog. We've since had him worked up. We had the heart ultrasound called an echo. Like I said, turns out he has early heart disease and we're keeping an eye on it, which is really good that we know this. We're gonna keep getting him checked every six months and when he needs treatment, we'll start treating him appropriately. Now, if this isn't one of the best reasons or examples for your annual physical exam like we recommend, 
I don't know what is. Finally, I mentioned purring, so just for fun, here is my super happy cat through a stethoscope. Fun, eh? But you can also see why we really can't hear anything when they're purring. But don't get me wrong, we love it. I hope you're now a little better informed about what this thing is, what we do with it, and what we hear. And I hope I've managed to convince you that the annual physical exam is really important. This tool, even though it's really old school, is still really useful. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you here again. If you like this video, please do subscribe. For more information, please visit animalcareclinics.ca or give us a call to book an appointment, 833-4MY-VETS. See you next time.